Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back once again to the Endless Void, where we are building a zoo. Because why not? Uh, last episode, we finished our little entrance plaza here, so we have our teleport spawners, um, and just really leaned into sort of the, the sci-fi magic, more, more magic theme, um, with our, our little spawner designs, added some mage towers, and then the sort of gate entrance with two of our... Um, info kiosk people so um yeah it's just a uh, whoop <laughs> and some some minor graphical glitches that only exist for us the player um our our guests are gonna be fine so this is gonna be the entrance to our new zoo um but of course a zoo is nothing without its animals so today we are gonna do as the title of this whole series implies we're it's a randomizer so we should probably go ahead and randomize some animals um so here's the rules with this, right? So last time we pulled out a D6, rolled to figure out what this area was gonna be themed as, and we got Taiga. And so when we go to do our animal, in fact, if I just pull up the Zoopedia, um, yeah, let's go for Aardvark. So we can see here in their natural habitats that they have ones for tropical and grassland. So the way that this is gonna work is that we are going to spin the wheel for a specific animal. And then after that, we're gonna figure out which sub biomes it can have. And we're gonna roll the dice to figure out which one we're leaning the most heavily into. So that gives us our idea for both our palette as well as our animal. And then that way we can sort of figure out how we're gonna build up all of these different sections and islands and all that kind of stuff. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get to spinning for our animal. Alrighty, so here is our giant wheel. <laughs> There's so many of them. Um, we've got almost 200 animals in the game. So uh, I'm fully aware that this might be a little bit visually intensive. So uh, yeah, there should be a little chapter on the bottom if you want to just skip ahead. Um, and I will just tell you what we got. Okay, cool. All right, so let's go ahead and spin the wheel and see what we're going to build for first. As I feared, we're we're building for African savanna elephants today. I I felt in my gut this was gonna happen, and here we are. Okay, well I mean the good news is that it gives us an excuse to really make up a, a big area and to really kind of work with it. Um, of course, the hardest thing is gonna be making sure that our elephants have enough traversable space, as usual. So let's go ahead and start by grabbing out our terrain brush and let's get something down so that way we can start to like build this up. Maybe not that big. Let's go with like a seven for now just to start pulling material out of. I think that'll probably be good and then maybe for this other one like this other side we'll just go up. There we are, nice big space. And then, yeah, we'll just plan for an island to be over here somewhere. And then I don't think that we actually need these bridges. There we are, that kind of does the trick. So this is gonna be our elephant island. So obviously when we're working with African elephants, space is gonna be a massive consideration. So let's go ahead and figure out how much space we're gonna need. And I'd like to have a pretty decent sized herd. Our minimal, our minimums are gonna be three, maximum is 15. 15 sounds a little bit excessive, um, just out of curiosity. Yeah, we need um, 11.5 thousand square meters, which is insanity. I think that's one of the largest in the game. So not 15, um, but maybe like, I don't know, six? Oh, that's gonna take about five, uh, 5.5 K, which is actually, like, I think we can make that work. Um, so basically what I'm hearing is that so long as we don't go obnoxious, we really do have about as much room as we could ask for. All right, so with that done, I'm, I'm certain that this is gonna be enough land. The biggest thing is gonna be making sure that our elephants can traverse it. But again, while well, we can expand all the room that we want for the elephants, getting people here is gonna be the bigger issue, I think. So let's go ahead and talk about our pathing, figure out how we're gonna get people to this island. 
Um, so first things first, I'm gonna move this up to like size 10. We're gonna go ahead and get a nice little entrance right around here. I think that works for me. And then we'll deal with this little platform over here when we get there. Let's go ahead and tone down the width a little bit. And let's talk about viewing areas. So I think up here, this really does feel like it's more of a viewing area than anything else. And then while I'm not in love with the way that this path connects, it does at least give us something to start with. So let's get down our barriers and figure out what we're working with. So with all this space, we've got 3984. Our target was 5,000. So we actually need a lot more land area. That's okay. So the other thing we need to consider is that this has to go somewhere. <laughs> and I don't know where exactly yet. Um, but for now, I think let's go ahead and expand this, this bottom area down here. And it might be nice if we turn this into sort of a centralized dome. So I know that that's going to take away from our land area quite a bit as far as our elephants are concerned. So I'm going to go ahead and get that started. We'll figure out how exactly that's going to work. And then after that, we will continue to map out our land space. Alrighty, so with the alterations we've made, we now have 6736 to work with, which is better, I think, considering that we had to subtract um, a portion of our ground in order to make allowances for some of our guest facilities. So yeah, with the allowances, I think that this is probably going to be workable. Um, we may need to expand just depending on how this ends up playing out. Uh, and if it does, I think that instead of going down, we should go like up. Um, but I haven't decided exactly how just yet. So we will get there. For now, I think that we need to go ahead and start getting in our staff and some animals. So first things first, let's reset all of our filters. African savanna elephants. So we'll get one good bowl. And just a random batch of females, that's fine. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. I think we said we were going for six. You know what, let's go for five for now, just so that way we can have a little bit more budget and allow for any babies that happen to come our way. And then we need some staff. So let's get keeper. Let's get caretaker. Um, we don't have anything that's really going to warrant a mechanic, but let's just have one anyway. Let's get security. We do need an extra vendor because this building, when I copied it over, did not place a vendor. We obviously need a vet. And we'll deal with educators when we actually have guests. But for now, we don't have any of that. So, animal trading. Collect our animals. Send to zoo. And in a little while, we should finally start getting in our critters. But this is where we need to make some alterations to the game as well. So right now, because of the fact that this is a diorama, they have us in our creative preset. So everything is turned off. I'm going to go ahead and move this to our default preset. And then we will work through what we need to remove and, and add and all that kind of stuff. So depending on how we end up decorating, we may disable this animal uh, plant need simply because I would like to actually make something pretty. Um, and you know what I think I am? Just because the elephants, you put one baobab in their habitat and they're like, they're good forever. They want everything else to be just plain. And I personally don't think that that's going to be satisfying or enjoyable. Um, hard shelter, I think we can keep it for now. Let's see where it ends up with us. I'm not too worried about our guest economics, honestly. Let's just go ahead and turn on fully trained staff because I don't want to have to deal with that. And we're not going to enable research. And then we are going to turn power everything on. If I can figure out how to incorporate power into some of these, that'll be great. But as it is, I'd end up having to put dozens of transformers for each one of these islands. And at that point, it's just more hassle than it's worth. 
But already we have our elephants coming down the pipeline. Which means that inevitably we will have guests starting to spawn as well the second that they realize that elephants exist. Oh, and I do need to do a little bit of cleanup. Because of the fact, yeah, our first guest just spawned, our security guard is spawning in and wandering around and doing all that kind of stuff. And our planters are not considered objects. So we need to go ahead and use our security barriers. There we are. And now guests should be forced to respect this. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about our elephants. Let's get them no longer crowding each other's space. Yeah, and this should be our bull. Yeah, it is. Okay. So welfare is terrible. Part of it is space. Um, and I suspect it's because he can't actually get down this platform. Yeah, no, he can't. So that's one of the first things we need to do is make sure that our elephants can actually get from point A to point B. Mm, there we go. So now he has all of this room to roam and he's our largest one. So he's going to give us the most problems and everything looks fine for him. So next let's deal with the really simple stuff. Let's deal with like grass, um, some of our rock work, I think. And then of course the other thing that we did not do is he has three biomes that, that they can possibly live in. They have desert, they have grassland, and they have aquatic. Now, aquatic is kind of a weird one for us because aquatic is technically a biome, kind of, but it's, if we pull up nature, let's go ahead and clear out this filter and go into our biomes. So we do have aquatic as a toggleable. And then of course, the other th thing that we need to respect is that they're going to be African only. So this is our very limited roster of acceptable plants. So we've got bush wallow trees, we've got a lot of reeds, we've got some blue lotus, um, hydralias, eelgrass. So this is more like an accent tone to anything else that we would do. Um, so for our purposes, I'm not actually going to treat aquatic as its own habitat. Um, I'm going to treat it as a subsection. So if a water, if, if an animal has a water requirement, then they're automatically treated as having aquatic. And then otherwise we need to respect, you know, the major biomes. So the desert, um, grassland, taiga, all of those things we are actually going to respect. So let's go ahead and get out a coin and we are going to flip it real quick. Here we are. So I'm going to use the one from the US Mint because the Google one is rigged. Um, <laughs> So let's go ahead and say that heads is going to be savanna, tails is going to be desert. Let's see what we get. Achievement unlocked. Baby steps. Oh, shush you. Flip. Okay, so we've got heads. That's savanna. Sound off. Yeah. Enter. Sound off. Thank you. Okay, so we are going to be using Africa and then aquatic and grassland, I believe. So we've got a nice big roster of different things to use. I think this will be plenty. It'll be fine. All right, and then let's talk about this water requirement because we're in the void. So it makes sense, at least to me, that we would have water going off into the void. Why not? Why wouldn't we make that choice? Let's get out our terrace tool, shallow pool offset. Good, so now, we have water roughly where I want it to be. Um, we have the start of our barrier that we're gonna use. So they don't have any hard shelter and they don't have any enrichment, but already our welfare is looking just so much better. Um, and of course, social is holding that back. Nutrition's gonna hold that back for their, for their first meal. Um, and then hard shelter is gonna be like a whole situation. So with that being said, um, I think that I am just gonna go ahead and start working and then we will check in at various intervals. So I will talk to you when I have more progress. Hi, okay, we're back. So I've done a little bit of fiddling off screen and I've made these spheres and we'll, we'll maybe deal with the spheres in another episode. Um, I might end up doing a tutorial about like making spheroids. I haven't decided because they're such a pain in the butt. Um, however, I'm thinking about, originally I think I wanted to do some kind of emplacement or a tower or something like that with this. I think I'm going to replace it with this sort of sphere platform and see whoop, see where that ends up taking us. 
So we're going to work on that for a little while and we'll see where it goes. Alrighty, hello yet again. So we have built all of the major, like, the big structural things, all the all the bits and bobs. Um, I ended up consulting with my husband a little bit because I had kind of run out of ideas of what to do after I'd gotten the circles done. And he suggested that I should do like kind of a, a rook chessboard piece theme and then have like an actual chessboard in here. Um, and then with that, I kind of figured, well, you know what, we're kind of halfway through this sort of semi-royalty themed idea. So might as well make a Fabergé egg. Um, and it turned out actually pretty good looking. I like it. Um, it's got some, some weird structural pieces to it, but I think it all works together. The colors and the, the shapes and the structures and everything. Um, and it leads into all of our different water areas, which I've reworked a little bit. I wanted to have two waterfalls. Um, just to give this a little bit more of like a marshy grasslands feel. And I think that that's going to work fine. Of course, we have our elephants who have been escaping and so all of our people are running away. So I ended up also reworking some of the pathing, of course. Uh, we now have this long path down through here. And I figure that I'll use this as like some sort of gem cave and then or like some kind of display area. And then maybe possibly we'll use this as like a lower showcase area for like a habitat down here somewhere. I haven't completely decided yet, but we'll see, we'll see. So right now this is kind of where we're at. Um, and then of course, from this point forward, it is just mostly a whole bunch of rock work and then placing in the vegetation. So I'm gonna get to work doing that and then we will start uh, figuring out how on earth we're gonna contain them up here because I, don't know beyond like just doing a fence and i mean i could i've done like a dozen fences at this point we even have these pieces over here in case we need to bring them over and use them and they would actually be tall enough that the guests couldn't see through so i don't know maybe we'll do that haven't decided yet but we'll get there we'll get there slowly but surely so let's go ahead and get started on the rock work Okay, so the basic rock work is done. We're kind of just using the standard style that I do where I just use the rock work to carve um, sheer cliffs and to make this sort of look like it's something and not just like terrain blob. Um, we might go a little bit more experimental with it. I haven't decided yet. Let's go ahead and get out our terrain paints and start reworking some of these areas. I think that looks kind of cute. The way the impingo just sort of I like, I like using trees as bushes occasionally. I think it works really well. And of course we did turn off their requirement for coverage, just so that way I can actually have the freedom to decorate this area because otherwise, I think I mentioned this earlier in the episode, it's been like, this has been over a week in the making. Um, but yeah, I think I mentioned a while ago that elephants just do not like coverage. They have like a 15%. And as grassland creatures, they should actually have like 100% because it's, yeah, it's just all foliage all the time with these guys. But anyway, my point is that we should have plenty of budget so long as I don't reduce their traversable space too much to basically do whatever we want with these areas. Um, so for example, I'm going to use a little bit of papyrus, just layer it in. And then we'll use maybe Impingo, continue this in as sort of like a, like a rock bush, I guess. I don't know. We do have these rather bizarre looking quiver trees. I never get to use these. Might be fun to implement some. Maybe just as like little scattered bushes occasionally. That might be cute. And then of course, if you're going to do a grassland, we have to get out our deer and grass pads. I would like you to know that he has so many opinions today. Okay, now Dan did mention that we need to remember to add in the habitat items for our savanna elephants, and I couldn't agree more. Let's go ahead and get out some of our enrichment pieces. I love the idea of having this weird little gimbal, so we're gonna add a couple of these. I think we need a tire. And then of course we'll need some food. So now that we at least have the enrichment in, I think we can go back to 
working on our grassland. Okay, and then I would like to do a little bit of gardening through here. Unfortunately, with the limitations that we have of grassland, a little bit of aquatic, and Africa, we really don't have a whole lot going for us. So I think we can add like a couple of topiary birds, some more flowers, maybe, I don't know, a wabbit or something. And then I guess we'll throw in some nettles. I, I don't like nettles. To be blunt, they look like the perfect representation of like a weed. I don't find them appealing, but they do. I mean, they kind of have flowers. They're not, uh, I don't know. I don't know if they're actually flowers, if they're just like dried out chunks of branch or something. I don't know. Maybe add in like a topiary tree. Something for the elephants to knock over on their day off. Yeah, and I mean like it's not the snazziest garden, but considering the fact that it's a garden for elephants, I think this is kind of the best we do. And of course we check our area of denial. It's not great through here, but they can move. They can access their little food enrichment. I'll take it. It's okay. So our last elephant is now in the habitat. So let's go ahead and get this barriered off. I don't know, from the rest of the habitat. So that way the elephants can't escape. Oh, we almost have all of our elephants in. Okay. We might have to go through and remove some of those topiaries just to clean up their movement space. You know what? We have them. We might as well just use them. Are they the nicest pieces I've ever made? Eh, I don't know. I feel like I could have done a little bit more to like work on these stacking edges. They're individually a, a cool piece. But I think together in collection, I think that they needed a little bit more work. At this point, I'm not gonna worry about it too much because like I said, days, days in the making for this nonsense. So I kinda just wanna focus on getting the episode out at this point. <laughs> um, so maybe at some point in time, you know, when we do our, our fish finishing touches or cleanup or whatever, we'll come back to it. Um, a bit like we talked about for our first little alcove area, trying to figure out, you know, where we're gonna put guest amenities and things. But for right now, I think it's okay. And again, you, you've noticed by now that I'm not decorating the edges of these islands. That's because I, I still don't know what I want to do with them. We might end up just cleaning up the rocks around here, adding some spare decorations and all that, but until we actually know what the rest of the zoo looks like, until we have like this area really fleshed out, I'm not, I'm not concerned, you know? So we will worry about when we get there. Um, next episode, we will probably try and work on this little platform up here, make this sort of attached. Yeah, and then we will worry about like cleaning up the edges, making it look passable and all that. But for right now, but for right now, I think that this is good enough for what I wanna do. Um, of course, like I said, there's a lot of things where like, I wish that I could do more with it. I'm just kind of out of ideas and it's been several days. So we will revisit and push this a little bit farther when I know what to do with it. Um, maybe get some of these habitat or uh, waterfalls filled out. And then after that, we will call it good. So let's go ahead and get these shrunk down. Looks a little better. And you know what? We're here. We might as well. So we'll have this grand waterfall. And this would be a smaller waterfall. Maybe. Maybe it will. Needs a lot of cleanup, but so does the rest of this habitat. So I think it's good enough for now. Okay, so that is gonna be our elephant habitat, at least for now. Um, Monsieur Elephant, can you please possibly, and I mean maybe, possibly. Thank you. There we go. And they do need a little, just a little bit more enrichment. Oh, 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 it fell out of the universe. Whoops. I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it's fine. 
I'm sure there's nothing wrong with that. Definitely. There's, mm-hmm, yep. Um, I'm sure it's fine. <sighs> okay, we are actually maxed out on that one. Oh, uh, let's get them a soccer ball. I don't see how this could go wrong. I think it'll be fine. Okay, and then they've got plenty of food. Um, just to be sure, let's get them a big old food tray. Extra large bedding. Good enough. And I believe that that is an elephant habitat, ladies and gentlemen. So, as we do our final walk around, this is what we've end up make, ended up making. It's not... Mm, of all the elephant habitats I've made, this is my favorite. Of all the habitats I've made, this is not even in the top ten. But, again, elephants are so, so hard to build for. And for weird reasons. Like, they're one of my favorite animals in real life. But they're very difficult creatures. Just because they're, they're big, they're lumbering, they're easy to contain, and that ease of containment also means that it's very difficult to decorate for their habitats. They should have way more foliage tolerance, and they don't. There's just a lot of things that are going on with them that make them a little bit frustrating. But it does look like our guests are having a good time. They've actually made it to the viewing platform. They're using it as is appropriate, which I'm very happy about. Yeah, okay, they are sinking a bit knee deep. I'm not, I'm not worried. It's okay. Of all the things to go wrong in this habitat, I'm not worried about the guests. Oh, and they're so excited. But yeah, and then we've got this little, like, cultured garden attempt over there, you know, as much as it can be for an elephant. Good enough. Um, all of the little elements in here, of course, are, are brought to you mostly by my husband. He had all he had the idea for this sort of like rook castle um as well as this chessboard he did suggest putting the toys on the chessboard and letting the elephants play on the toys and that was a really cool idea and the only reason i didn't do it is because we needed some kind of hard shelter for them and if i did a chessboard for all of the toys then we weren't going to be able to have enough space for an elephant shelter without overcrowding the space and taking away any of the natural parts. So that's the only reason I didn't do that, but we can always revisit. Oh, and they're already expecting offspring. That's lovely. Anyway, I hope you all have enjoyed. Um, again, we may revisit someday, but I'm pretty happy with it, especially the Fabergé egg. It has no business being solid. <laughs> None whatsoever. So yeah thank you for joining me uh we will be spinning the wheel again for next time we'll see what animal we get i hope to see you then thank you and goodbye happy building <laughs>